Hi, uh, I'm Samir Kulagu and uh, this is my latest solo show, Edifice Complex. It's happening at uh, Tath's new space in Fort Pauli. The name of the show itself is Edifice Complex, which is the phenomenon of uh, you know organizations, governments, individuals building uh, grandiose structures to give an impression of progress. Uh, and those are the themes that are kind of in most of the works of how these important structures keep coming up and how they change over time. I'll just talk about these works. They're called drawn time lapses. Uh, and they're basically a set of sequential drawings that looks at transformation of elements of architecture. Uh, this one specifically is, uh, I'm looking at Chacha's cantilevers and how they kind of reveal uh, the class of society that resides in that particular uh, structure or building, um, and also the you know the identity related to chacha. So, for example, these chachas are more uh, prominent in the southern parts of India, and they are inspired from the temple architecture. Uh, and these are the ones that don't have any chachas and that seem to be like chiseled out of a space, which doesn't need a chacha. Um, and how you can kind of tell uh, how like architecture and elements of architecture reveal uh, the society and the kind of people that reside within the space uh, and how that evolved over time. This one is called of modernism and modification and I was thinking about how modernist structures uh, have been demolished in recent time, the most prominent example being the Hall of Nations in Delhi. Uh, and how modern structures are not considered as heritage structures uh, because of you know the time that it was built during. I mean, heritage structures need to be at least 75 years old to get a heritage back. And you know, those kind of ideas of demolition and reconstruction and change. This one's called of coastal roads and coastal codes. Um, and I was wondering uh, that when a reclamation happens, for example, the coastal roads are being built and you know uh, they've been filling up or extending the boundaries of Bombay. And when a new piece of land is added to a city or a space, uh, does it get a new coastal code? So that was a thought that I was kind of ruminating on. And these are all different smaller bits and pieces, elements of construction site or an infrastructure site um, interspersed with these flashes of a more representational drawing uh, which for me is like uh, you know seeing the city or flashes of the city through a taxi um, that's kind of a bounty wall of a section of the coastal road project um, then you'll also see these kind of orange line drawings, which is somewhat top view of a house or a space, and how that is also evolving over time over these frames. Uh, and again, you'll see the film version of it uh, on the screens. This one's called Of Packers and Movers and Shakers. So, this may be looking at maybe 50 years of change of these elements. But the video, uh, the video version of it kind of compresses it into like a 10 or 15 second clip. So it's yeah. like you can see it, each drawing could be like maybe one week or a month of change. But the videos kind of put it together in a very quick and that makes it a very different thing to see. Uh, all the time lapses follow the same uh, similar thought process. <clears throat> These time lapses are also not, uh, I, mean, I haven't planned it, so I would start with one form and see, like, you know, page by page go to the next one, and I would let it evolve on its own. Uh, so at some points, like this sequence, for example, stopped around here, and then I started to go in a different direction. So there are these pauses, and then taking off from, you know, one shape into another. Um, and that process was very, uh, very like liberating. I didn't worry too much about you know planning it out beforehand. 
So these are the video versions of the same drawings in sequence. These are called tetrophils. Uh, so there are many different scales. For example, this is uh, based on a house I saw in Alpine, uh, which which seemed like was built in the 70s or 80s. You know, it had this uh, modernist sort of vibe, uh, but also a bit of randomness happening within that. You know, where we didn't know that there was no architect involved. It was you know. It was built between the contractor and the owner or the person who commissioned it. So some things seem unnecessary. Uh, they don't have a function, but they're there. And that reminded me of Memphis design. Uh, this uh, uh, Memphis design was this group of designers in, in Italy, in Milan, uh, who kind of revolted against uh, very rigid principles of Bauhaus, uh, you know, the Modernist. So Memphis was kind of postmodern. They were trying to break uh, this uh, this need that form should follow function. So they were being playful with their designs, uh, and and unfortunately the group kind of uh, they were heavily criticized at that time. They they came across as gaudy and you know, uh, so they just this kind of disbanded and it it, it basically ended in late eighties. Uh, but now we see like kind of a revival of uh, Memphis design, but it's also it's gone across like in fashion you can see it the way the patterns are made. Uh, uh, but interestingly, uh, Memphis design, the founder Ettore Sotsas, he was in India in the 70s uh, in Tiruvan Malay and he saw uh, these kind of structures and that inspired him to start Memphis design. So there's a connection there. Yeah, His, he designed furniture, he designed products. And he named them Ashoka, and you know, like the, it's all there, you know, you see. So, anyway, I was trying to like come back to that connection of Memphis and this. Uh, but it's so strange that you know, those Memphis group designers were privileged people and they were just doing it out of sort of a, you know, as a pushback to this rigid kind of thought process. Whereas here, it's just a matter of life, like it just happens. It's happened over time. Uh, these four also uh, referencing the people, the workforce who have come from different states to work on these kind of structures. Uh, and I wonder if they are retrofits or the structures are retrofitted. So that is the connection. Uh, these are called outside the gated community. Uh, then you look at, look at like advertisements of uh, these builders uh, like the Lodas or the Hiranandanis or uh, you know Maxi Builders and uh, their USP is gated community. So what they're saying is that you don't have to step outside the compound. Everything is inside. You don't have to go out to get groceries. You, there's a pool, there's a your gym is all it's all there. You don't even have to step out. You just take your car and move from one point to another. So gated community is like uh, the USP. Um, but outside the gated community, again, the same disparity, this, this sudden change where there are settlements, informal architecture happening. And that I find interesting in the way um, there is, you know, this kind of uh, uh, ingenuity about creating these spaces. So, and these kind of informal structures, they adapt. And you see like extensions built, you see like, you know, things being modified very quickly. Uh, but this gated community stays the same. Uh, people go in and out in their cars, but the outside is full of life, fully changing all the time.